Hello and welcome to Indiana Arts Desk. I'm Marcus Jackman. Thanks for tuning in. Coming up on this week's broadcast, the Great Ideas Public Art Competition in Indianapolis and the Arts Calendar. But first, Nancy Huth, the Assistant Director of Ball State's Museum of Art, walked Indiana Arts Desk through an exhibit of the work of John Otis Adams, sometime Muncie resident, now on display through September 26th. Uh, William Merritt Chase, who's kind of their hero, at least he's Adams' hero. Um, William Merritt Chase was born in Indiana, spends most of his career in New York, but it's, it's a William Merritt Chase painting that caused Adams to become an artist in the first place, an early still life. One of the so-called Hoosier group of painters of the 19th century, John Otis Adams, was trained in Germany, in Munich, in fact, using the dark, heavy palette of colors employed by the masters of the Royal Academy there. But when he returned to Muncie, suddenly the look of his work changed. Huth says it's likely that somehow the Hoosier group was exposed to French Impressionism, although they didn't emulate it in every detail. For these artists, I think, unlike the French Impressionists, they're a lot more interested in what in art terms is called local color, where you paint the color that you see. The Impressionists, um, especially somebody like Monet, will really work a lot of color into a composition that isn't necessarily isn't necessarily what you see, but, but how that color might break down if you analyzed it. Another hallmark of the Hoosier group, which also includes T.C. Steele, William Forsyth, Otto Stark, and Wayman Adams, is their devotion to Indiana as a subject for their landscapes, although this struck some people as a limitation. And there were critics who were writing in their day that talked about how ugly Indiana was and, and who congratulated them on their ability to make this ugly landscape look pretty. Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, I, I mean, I have a hard time swallowing that because I think a lot of us travel to southern Indiana in the fall to see the beautiful leaves and uh, that sort of thing, but <laughs> that's what people thought. Included in the exhibition are some of Adams' Academy work, including two copies of works by European masters. Huth says in those days, before student loans, copying a famous work for a wealthy patron back home was a common way to pay for an art education. I mean, to us that seems kind of odd, but some, but um, a scholar in Indianapolis has pointed out that if you wanted, that it was a pretty good substitute for having an original work of art. This time, in the late 1880s, there weren't a lot of local opportunities to see original old masters, original 19th century European or English painting. And so if you could get somebody to make you a copy, that was that was pretty good. That was a, a close second. And although much of the work of John Otis Adams is in the hands of the Ball family, as he was related by marriage and is called Uncle Jack by some, Huth says the Hoosier group was very aware of the commercial aspects of their paintings. T.C. Steele and Forsyth both painted with Adams a lot. And T.C. Steele had a very um, active correspondence with his wife Libby. And he writes to Libby about painting with Adams and um, being very interested in getting these fall scenes down on canvas because they knew they would sell. So their pattern seems to have been to spend the summer painting into the fall and then at the end of at, at late fall, early winter, have an exhibition of all these autumn scenes and they would just sell like hotcakes. The art of John Otis Adams is on display at the BSU Museum of Art until September 26th. Nancy Huth will lead a gallery talk on his work Sunday the 12th at 2.30 p.m. For more information, call 285-5242 or enter Ball State Museum of Art into your favorite search engine.